Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be going over a leveling guide for the Assassin. This guide will help you get from Act 1 Normal all the way to Act 5 Hell. I use this strategy when starting out on ladder and it really makes the game go a lot smoother. This guide is to help anyone who is new to the game, starting out fresh on ladder, or maybe just struggling to get through the difficulties. Hopefully you find some useful tips and this helps you power through to the end. I'll be going over what to do in Normal, Nightmare, and Hell difficulties, as well as what skills I use and what gear to aim for. I'll be giving as much information as I possibly can to make sure that your playing experience is a good one. So starting off with Normal difficulty, if you're soloing, you're going to want to stick around to about level 45. You can even stick around and get to level 50, though that's a stretch and the experience gain here diminishes quite a bit. This is only to beef you up before entering Nightmare. With this guide, you aren't going to need to do the typical Tristram or Tomb Runs. This is strictly for running straight through the game. Let's begin with the skills. So for the skills with the Assassin, you're going to want to go Fire Traps. Fire skills, when you first start off, are insanely powerful. You're going to want to level up Fire Blasts up until about level 12. Once you hit level 12, that's when your main skill that you're going to be using unlocks, which is Wake of Fire. After that... All the points you're going to want to put is into Wake of Fire until it's maxed out. The area damage of Wake of Fire and the lack of fire immunes is normal makes this skill insanely powerful. Though if you make it to Bale a little early, let's say level 25-26ish, you might want to at least get one point in the Mind Blast. That way you could stun the Act 4 and Act 5 waves as they are a little aggressive and a little bit stubborn to deal with. You'll run into one fire immune when bailing and it's in the first wave. There's a couple simple ways to fix this, either use an Act 1 or Act 2 Mercenary with a weapon and he should be able to knock him out, put a point in the Shadow Warrior, or both. We'll discuss the Mercenaries here in a minute. Either way, it's an easy fix around a minor issue. You should be able to get all these skills, including the Wake of Fire maxed out by level 35. After that, you're going to want to put the remaining points into Fire Blast to help increase the damage of Wake of Fire. Also just want to note here that she is a mana hog and you're going to want to stack up hard on mana potions. Prior to the Act 2 or Act 1 Mercenary, for normal I like using the Act 3 Cold Mercenary. It makes it a little easier when soloing the game as it freezes enemies. It helps you adjust to the monster difficulty slowly but surely. In Act 3 with all the fetishes and everything it really slows them down and it helps you just get accustomed to a little bit quicker of a speed. Again, use them until you get the bailing, and this is where you can switch to Act 2 or Act 1 if you choose for the one fire immune. Now you might be wondering, why do we want to choose between an Act 1 or Act 2 mercenary, and it's mainly because of one item, and that's Insight. Thanks to one of the updates in D2R, you can now make Insight in a bow. So when you get Soul Rune, hopefully from a forge or upgrading your runes, whichever 4 socket base you have available, that's what I would go with. The Meditation Aura is huge and it will help your Assassin from downing mana pots like Little Debbie eating fudge rounds. For the Mercenary Armor and Helmet, I just gave mine a Stealth. It's an easy rune word to make and it will just help it with a little bit of survivability. And I gave it a Warm Skull Helmet. It has a little bit of Life Leech to help him survive a little bit more. Again, just try to get anything to help your Mercenary survive at this point. It's normal. It's not super critical. You just want him to survive. Now let's talk about gear. For normal difficulty, you can literally get through the game without any gear. However, I'll go over some items that will make things a lot smoother for you. Two things you want to try to get right off the bat, and they're probably the easiest items, would be a Stealth Rune Word and a Leaf Rune Word. For the Leaf Rune Word, you're going to want to find a two open socket based staff, and you could either find this out in the wild or get it from an NPC. And you want to use this for your weapon because it gets plus 3 to fire skills, which is huge for your wake of fire damage. So it's a nice little rune word to have early on. And it's not that expensive. It costs a tur rune and a ral rune. You can find these either in the countess. You'll probably find them out in the gameplay. Or a good place to farm these runes would be the tombs of Tal Rasha. And for stealth, you want to find a 2 open socket armor. Again, not too high of runes to find, a Tal rune and an Eth rune. Again, you can find this base either at an NPC or out while you're playing. You're probably going to find it sooner than later. And it's a low level to have and it will help with your mana regeneration as well. So these are two cheap, easy items to get early on that will help you a lot. Another rune word that you could try to aim for to get would be a lore rune word. It's a two open socket crown and it costs an Ort rune and a Soul rune. 
soul you could possibly get from either Chaos Sanctuary or doing your forge. Hopefully you get it sooner than later, or you can upgrade some runes to get it. But this gives one to skills, some lightning resistances, and some damage reduction. So the one to skills obviously will help out your damage early on, which is a nice feature to have. Now, if you could get your hands on a four open socket crystal sword and make a spirit, this would be the ideal weapon to use. It gets plus two to skills, and it gives a lot of mana for your low level. So this would be ideal. But in the meantime, just try to use a leaf. Again, this gives plus three to fire skills. If you do happen to get a spirit sword, you could always pair it with a rhyme shield. Shale is a little bit trickier to get in normal. You'll have to get it either from like the world stone or throne of destruction or upgrading runes. But this gives some resistances, mana regeneration, block rate, cannot be frozen. It's just a good shield to pair with the spirit sword. Again, these are a little bit trickier to get early on, but these will help you a lot if you can get your hands on them. So now as for your other gear, just get anything that will make life easier. I like using Mage Fist gloves if you can get your hands on them. One to fire skills. Again, this is good for your wake of fire. And it has some mana regeneration. Again, that will help a lot with using a lot of mana potions and buying them. Uh, rings to use, I would use Manold. I know they're annoying to find later on, but this helps with mana regeneration and it gives some life. For my amulet, I just put the uh, Etlich amulet on. It gives plus one to skills, helps with damage. Boots and belt, just get whatever you can to survive. Here, I just paired it with Saigons. You're going to want to get some boots with resistances if you can. And then belt, I put the Saigons on just to give more potion slots it gives the max that you can get which is nice when you're going through potions a lot here if you could get your hands on a viper magi this is a good armor to have it's one of the skills resistances and some magic damage reduction and you could always put a perfect diamond in it if you need some more resistances it's just a solid armor overall for helmets for a cheap one you could go with tarn helm again plus one of the skills and it gives some magic find or you could use a peasant crown as well. This gives one of the skills. So these are a couple other options. And for another weapon, you could always make a pattern katar. So it's just whatever you can get your hands on at this point. Again, it's normal difficulty. It's not going to be super hard. But these are just some items you could possibly aim for to help make it smoother and easier to get through and get onto Nightmare. Now let's move on to Nightmare. So in Nightmare, by the time you hit Act 5, you will be around level 56 through 60-ish, basing this off of my experience of playing. When you reach this point, slightly before like Act 4 or so, you're going to start running into more and more Fire Munes, and you're going to start having a harder time killing. You can make it to Act 5 with the Wake of Fire build, but this is where we need to redo our build completely. Unless you're partnered with a Paladin who has Conviction maxed, you're going to struggle a little bit, so here's what we're going to do. So to help us gain momentum and gain power again, we're going to convert our build to a Phoenix Strike build. So go to Act 1 after you do the Den of Evil, either in Normal or Nightmare, and reset all your stats and skill points. For your skills, you're obviously going to max out Phoenix Strike. This is going to be your main charge-up skill. And since we don't have Mosaic Claws yet, we can't stack our charges, so they will run out periodically after every hit. So you're going to have to constantly keep charging them up and then use your finisher move to knock it off, rinse and repeat. So with the Phoenix Strike charges, the first charge is Meteor, which is fire damage. Second charge is Chain Lightning, which is lightning damage. And third charge is Ice Bolt, which is cold damage. So when you're facing a certain monster that has the immunity to a specific resistance, you could just pick whichever one of these charges and hit them with it. And that way... You could just get through the game a lot easier than just going straight wake of fire, which is pure fire damage. You're going to run into problems. So this is why we are converting to a Phoenix Strike Assassin. Don't forget to put at least one point into your finishers. I put one point into Dragon Talon. That's usually what I use for my finisher move to set off the charges for Phoenix Strike. However, you could always use Dragonflight as well. This is like a cheaper version of Enigma. It teleports you to the group of monsters. So if you're trying to fly through the game pretty fast or just fly through for a bail run, this would be ideal to use and then switch off to Dragon Talon when you're more stationary for fighting monsters. That's what I like to do anyways. 
For your other skills here, since Phoenix Strike has a lot of synergies, I start putting points into my synergies just to boost the damage a little bit more for my Phoenix Strike charges. For the Shadow skills, I at least get one point up to Fade. You can either switch between Burst of Speed or Fade depending on your resistances. And if you have a Treachery, then just keep Fade in your back pocket because you're eventually going to switch that armor out. But Treachery casts a level 15 Fade. So just keep that in mind when you're adding your points. And then I put at least one point in the Shadow Master. It's just a nice meat shield to have laying around. And then I get at least one point into Mind Blast. That way if I need to stun something to buy myself a little bit of time, I could always put it on a hotkey, stun monsters, stun the waves in bail runs, and we should be good to go from there. So these are the skills. Again, they're pretty straightforward. No trap skills because you're done with Wake of Fire. You're just strictly martial arts right now. And again, for your stats, it's the same. It's enough strength to wear your gear. Obviously, you're a little under leveled here underpowered so you're going to have to boost more points into strength and dex until you get those charms like annie and torch and whatnot but just make sure you have enough stuff to wear the gear that you want to use for your gear if you could get your hands on the bar tux this would be ideal for you at this point it gives at least total plus three to skills to your martial arts skills which is good for your finisher and your charge ups and then it gives you some faster hit recovery to get you close to that uh, 48% faster hit recovery breaking point, which is five frames. See here, we have 60 with the items we currently have on. So that's pretty good right there. It also gives you a lot of strength and dexterity to free up some points if you need to put them into life or if you're struggling with mana still, a little bit of energy. But at this point, since you're going to martial arts, I don't think you're going to need that much energy, especially if an insight on your mercenary Again, it just helps free up some points and you could add them to life if you need to. If you can't get your hands on a bar tux, a cheap option to go with would be a pattern rune word. It costs a Tal or Thal. They added this a couple patches ago. It gives some resistances and it's not that bad of a weapon just to hold you over until you're able to get something a little bit better. For your armor, you're going to want to try to get treachery. This gives plus two the skills. And as you can see here, if you get hit, it casts Fade, which boosts your resistances. And it has some faster hit recovery and increased attack speed. Overall, this would be your ideal Nightmare Armor. If you can't get your hands on this, try to get a Spirit Shroud. It gives one of the skills and it gives a Cannot Be Frozen. That will help you if you can't get a Raven Frost or a Rhyme Shield with that ability. So this is a good alternative. And as we said in normal gear, if you can get your hands on a Viper Magi, that is another good alternative to your armor. For your shield, I went with a Rhyme Shield. Again, it gives resistances that cannot be frozen. And if you can't get your hands on this, this is quite easy to make a Nightmare at this point. But if you could get a Lidless Wall, that would be a good alternative. Or a Saigon Shield for the plus one to skills. Even though that's a little strength heavy, it will just be a shield to use at this point but I would try to get a Rhyme or a Lidless if possible. For the boots and gloves, I'm going to butcher this, but it's probably Hisaris, and it gives quite the attack rating bonus that you're going to need to make sure that your hits are landing when you're charging up your Phoenix Strike so you could get off your charges faster. So the two-set bonus here, obviously it's based on character level, but your attack rating will constantly go up, and it gives a little bit of resistances as well. So also for the amulet and the rings, I went with the angelic combo. Again, it gives you an insane attack rating bonus that's based on character level, which will help you get your attacks on to get your charges up a lot faster. For my helmet, I went with Natalia's helmet. It gives a lot of strength, a lot of dexterity and resistances, which will help free up some more points if you need more life. For my gloves, I chose to go with Blood Fist. It gives a little bit of increased attack speed, a lot of faster hit recovery to help you hit that break point and some life. So not a bad choice to use here. But these are some items that could help you with a Phoenix Strike build get through Nightmare and onto Hell difficulty. With all that, you should be able to easily level up to 75-ish in Nightmare. And that way it will help you get ready for hell, give you more skill points and everything you need. Hopefully you find some better runes and better gear to help you more equip for hell. And we will move on to hell difficulty now. And now we move on to hell difficulty. 
At this point, you'll be anywhere from level 75 to 80. You should be finding some upgraded gear to use, as well as some gear to trade for what you're looking for. In Hell, we want to focus on survivability because they hit a lot harder, so you're going to want to aim for max resistances any way you can. I'll be showing a pretty budget friendly gear setup here that will hold you over until you can get better gear. However, I wouldn't rely on it super long, but you'll be able to get through the game. So for gear, you're going to want to get two mosaic claws as fast as possible. Obviously, with starting out ladder and starting out the first day and everything, it's not going to be very viable for a majority of the people. So here's a, another budget friendly alternative that you could trade for a lot of this gear and be able to get it to help you through hell. So for starters, I went with the full Nat set. I know it's not popular and some people don't like it. However, it gives some nice survivability things that you need. It gives Mana Leech, Life Leech, Skills, all resistances, physical damage reduction and magic damage reduction. Just things that will help you survive a little bit. And the armor has three sockets. You could get one to three, but it's pretty easy to get a three socketed one. The helmet, as we said in the Nightmare Gear video, it has some nice attributes as well the claw gives some increased attack speed helps you get your charges up a little bit faster and then the boots give some resistances that you need and some faster run walk to move a little bit quicker so overall it's a pretty solid set but i would try to upgrade from it as fast as possible for your offhand i would put the bar tucks on again we went over this in the nightmare gear video it's just a nice overall weapon to have for your amulet and rings, I went with the angelic combo again. It gives you the attack rating you need for your phoenix strike charges. And then for the other ring, I went with the raven frost. A little bit of attack rating, some decks, some mana, and the cannot be frozen, which is huge. For the gloves, I went with laying of hands. They're pretty easy to get. Gives you 20 increased attack speed here and 50 fire resistances, which will help in the chaos sanctuary when you're fighting infector of souls. And for the belt, I went with String of Ears. It gives some life leads, some physical damage reduction, and some magic reduction as well. Again, this gear isn't anything special. It's not the greatest, but it is at least budget friendly. And you're able to at least get through the game with this gear and survive. You want to upgrade as fast as you can from this, but this will hold you over for now. For your skills, I just put more points into the synergies for Phoenix Strike. Once you get Mosaic Claws, you'll be able to hold all these charges at one time, which is pretty cool. So just add all your extra points to here. For the Shadow Skills, I added a few more into Fade. Again, it helps with your resistances and it helps with physical damage reduction. So just overall pretty solid to have for survivability. And this sums up my Assassin Ladder Restart Guide. I hope you found this video helpful. I tried to keep my rambling to a minimum while giving as much information as I could. Whether you're starting out fresh on a ladder reset or making a new character in general, I hope this video helps you make it to the end.